Welcome to the user guide for quality management assessment within the Performax 360 stakeholder engagement platform. Now there are a lot of benefits to any organization or function when they engage their employees at a higher level and orchestrate a greater and deeper uh, level of collaboration. And you'll see how the uh, Performax 360 assessments and the results and also the digital engagement process helps you uh, in that journey. So in this user guide we'll first take a look at the web platform which you're, which you're looking at right now and you'll see uh, you know all the different um, of, you know reports and results uh, that are available to you and a lot of ideas for action that you receive from stakeholders uh, you'll be able to analyze them and take action on them. So once you log into the web platform, one of the features is that there is this uh, in-app video guide in almost every page, in almost every section. Uh, if you click that, uh, you'll see this open up and you can actually play uh, the relevant uh, uh, in-app video guide that helps you see what's on that page, why it's there, why it's relevant, and why it matters. Now, uh, to access our quality management assessment, let's go to My Assessments and click on Assessment Dashboard. And this will take us to the quality management assessment as a support function. Let me open that up. And here we see quality management. There are two quality management assessments that have been conducted as part of this demo. And there are two because there are two different methods uh, in the questionnaire design that are available to you. The first one is the direct selection method, which is a simpler method where you simply select the critical issues that are relevant to your quality management function and that's it. And, and the stakeholders uh, are, give, are going to give feedback on those issues. The second one is called the CSF method and this is a bit more involved and a bit more comprehensive. Uh, and so the CSF method or critical success factor method was invented at the MIT in Boston and uh, this method uh, ensures that the critical issues that are selected to be included in the questionnaire are actually mapped to the uh, quality management functions uh, long-term goals and uh, you know sort of short-term objectives and so on so uh, for the purpose of this demo we are going to look at the CSF method and uh, before we click on and uh, the performance dashboard uh, let's see what's over here uh, first of all you see effectiveness levels current effectiveness desired effectiveness and effectiveness gap and these numbers are based on stakeholder feedback we've received on the quality management function so far and these are dynamic numbers they can change every day um, so uh, this is all a live ongoing feedback process you see who is the executive sponsor, assessment administrator. You also see what percentage of assessors have given feedback. In this case, all of them have given feedback. Now, you see these four buttons. The digital engagement process, we'll review that. And that's the three-step process for conducting the assessment, reviewing the results, and taking action on the results. The administration dashboard gives you access to, you know, what's the status of different steps and, and helps you make sure that the assessment is on track. The third button here is the performance dashboard. This actually gives you access to all the data and analytics that's, uh, that comes with the Performance 360 including you know, SWOT analysis, balanced scorecard, stakeholder feedback, ideas for action, KPIs, as well as the stakeholder sentiment analysis from IBM Watson. And finally, the implementation dashboard. This is basically going to give you access to um, the ideas for action or the IFAs or what you can call action plans, uh, whatever you have approved and those, are that, those that are under implementation, what's their status and also helps you monitor their progress. So, so um, let's start with the digital engagement process. Let's click here. And this is a three-step process. Starts with discovery, step one, then analysis, which is step two, and then action, which is step three. So in the discovery step, this is all about data discovery, knowledge discovery. It's about engaging stakeholders. It's about customizing a questionnaire that's relevant to your quality management function. Then um, 
then engaging the right stakeholders to give feedback on the effectiveness level uh, of the quality management function. And so once you've once you have customized the questionnaire and selected the assessors, then the, the, the invitation goes out and they actually give feedback. And once the stakeholder feedback is received, uh, you know, that's basically discovery. You know, that's the part uh, that we are going to review as step one. Um, then we will actually, I'll, I'll go through the second and third step analysis and action in a minute. Let it load up here. And so here we go. Uh, here you see for quality management, you see the digital engagement process, you see discovery here, and then analysis, and then action. So the discovery uh, step uh, involves a few items. Firstly, configure assessment. So obviously you have to configure your assessment, that is customize it uh, for your organization. You um, let's take a look at uh, the other elements. So after configuring your assessment, uh, you know here this is the assessment configurator. We'll go through this. Then uh, you will get access to the administration dashboard. Uh, here you'll be able to see the the different items that need to be done in order to make sure the assessment goes properly. Then the third step is selecting the expert panel. This is done by the executive sponsor or the head of quality management. Here, uh, you will be able to nominate the expert uh, panel members. We'll review that. Then you have customized questionnaire section. This customization is done by one of the expert panels, the expert panel on assessment design. And the uh, another expert panel on stakeholder selection. They do the stakeholder selection. And we'll review that as well. Then the executive sponsor, that is the head of quality management, he or she is going to approve the questionnaire as well as the assessor list. And once those are approved, the, um, the assessment questionnaire, which shows up uh, uh, here, the assessment questionnaire is uh, basically utilized where the assessors give feedback on specific issues. So that's the discovery um, part. And um, it looks like many steps, but actually it can go very quickly. Let's take a look at the configure assessment. This can be done within 15 minutes. Uh, so you've got a timeline if you want to set a timeline for initial round of assessment feedback by selecting a start date and then you know discovery analysis action, how many weeks you'd like to spend on each of these. So this is just to make sure that the first round of assessment feedback comes back to you within uh, a certain number of weeks. But as an ongoing assessment process, there is essentially no end date to uh, assessment feedback. So that's the timeline. Selections, this section helps you select the questionnaire structure and also you can nominate an assessment administrator, you can also nominate yourself as part of the expert panel and then uh, you can actually hire Performax team for uh, Jumpstart implementation or lifecycle management. This is part of turnkey implementation services. Now in the third step here you can actually select the assessor anonymity options do you want the assessors to remain anonymous? Do you not want them to remain anonymous? Or do you want to let them decide if they want to remain anonymous? These are your options here. Then you have, do you want to re share results with assessors? If, if yes, then make, turn it on or off. Then the branding part is where you can upload your company's logo and then that will show up in the assessment, uh, you know, in the assessment results and reports area. Then you have the gamification. This is interesting because as an ongoing assessment, you want assessors to be motivated and engaged. So it's not enough for them to just give a one uh, initial round of feedback. You want them to log back in uh, using their mobile device or the web and continuous, continuously give feedback or periodically give feedback. So in order to encourage them, uh, you might want to give them monetary or non-monetary rewards on a certain frequency. And so if you if you use the gamification, if you turn that on, if you turn it off, it's off. If you turn it on, then uh, there are some points uh, you can allocate uh, to specific areas. And uh, based on your point allocations, uh, assessor leaderboard is developed and then you can actually uh, reward them and uh, keep them motivated. The invite CEO option basically uh, ensures that you have the option to invite uh, your CEO to view the results. The performance alert section, uh, 
is a area where you can configure what is called performance alerts. That means you can actually turn it off if you don't want the alerts. If you turn it on, then uh, these are alerts that will come to you via email and mobile, um, you know, as notifications, and then you can view what are the positive alerts, meaning what are the areas where your quality management function is doing very well and cause for celebration. What are the areas where it's not doing well and it's a, a area of concern? So you can choose the frequency of the alerts, you can choose the alert topics, uh, and then you can also uh, uh, you know, select the alert parameters for positive and negative alerts. And finally, you have mission, vision, values, and goals. Now, every organization has them uh, either at a corporate level or and or a department level. So you can enter both the corporate level and departmental level for quality management, the vision, mission, values, and then key goals and objectives. These are dynamic, you can change these anytime. Uh, the idea is that uh, users, including assessors, expert panel members, and so on, uh, will be able to get access to this, uh, uh, th this data anytime. And uh, like I said before, you can just click view video and that actually explains how to do this part uh, and so on. Okay, so that's the assessment configurator. It takes no more than 15 to 20 minutes to, to get done. So once, as an executive sponsor or head of quality management, once you complete the assessment configuration, um, the assessment, uh, the administration dashboard here, uh, this, at that point, it will all remain red mostly, or some, of, some will be green because you've already uh, configured the assessment. The idea is each box is an assessment action item uh, that, um, that you may want to complete. If it's red, that means you haven't completed it. If it's green, that means you have. And, and so it helps you keep track uh, of all the three steps in the assessment process, discovery, uh, analysis, and action. So in the discovery step, you can see uh, there are a lot of boxes here. And uh, one of the key elements of the discovery is, is to engage stakeholders and assessors. If you scroll down uh, in the assessment uh, administration dashboard here, you will see the list of assessors who've been nominated to give feedback. So here you can see um, you've got um, uh, you've got a number of assessors, and all of them have pretty much submitted their feedback. If any didn't, it would actually tell you you know hasn't submitted feedback yet. So you can actually send them a reminder email as well. So um, that's the discovery part. In the analysis part, well, the analysis is done automatically and you'll be able to see the results. We'll go through the whole analysis section to the performance dashboard. And here you can share results with uh, anyone you wish, uh, inside or outside your organization. And then the action, this is where uh, you nominate, um, you, you actually approve action items uh, and the, uh, the ac approved action items actually show up here. And uh, when you assign them to certain key persons accountable, you can actually communicate with them as well. Okay, so that's the assessment administration dashboard for quality management. It's designed to help you administer the assessment process. Now the third part, this is where you select the expert panel members. Now this is also very quick because you can quickly nominate uh, with names and email addresses and designations, uh, maybe two to three people. Um, they could be external consultants as well or internal um, executives and the expert panel on assessment design their job is for quality management that is their job is to uh, select the right critical issues to be included in the questionnaire so they select uh, these items and then uh, once they uh, submit them for approval the head of quality management or the executive sponsor will approve those uh, those items as part of the questionnaire. The second expert panel for quality management, this is on stakeholder selection and their job is to nominate assessors who are individuals. Um, and these individuals would be obviously representing certain stakeholder groups, either senior management or mid-level management, junior management, maybe ge uh, geographic location or product lines, or they could be external customers or suppliers, partners, whatever stakeholder group uh, you choose. So. Uh, so they would actually nominate these um, assessors and the executive sponsor would then also have to approve the assessor list. So these are the two expert panels. And then the third expert panel, uh, their job comes in a bit later. That is, once the stakeholders have submitted feedback, this is the expert panel on action planning. Their job is to actually review all the ideas for action submitted, 
uh, they can actually add new ideas for action uh, as well and and they would shortlist these ideas for action to a small reasonable number manageable number that would then be submitted to the executive sponsor for approval so these are the three expert panels so as an executive sponsor what you really have to do is configure the assessment in, uh, in about 15 minutes or 20 minutes and select expert panel members again 15 to 20 minutes so within 40 minutes you're ready to uh, actually initiate the assessment you really don't have anything else that needs to be done now uh, once the expert panels have been nominated this customized questionnaire this is the responsibility of the expert panel on assessment design and and this is how it looks they would see these templates and re uh, related to the templates they will see the critical issues listed at the bottom so if they select this template for example they see a particular uh, set of critical issues uh, if they see click this one they see a different list and they would then be able to select um, the key result areas then strategic goals key objectives and then the critical issues underneath those so they can select any combination they can also select their industry specific uh, you know uh, template and those critical issues are industry specific and then also they can actually um, search the entire uh, best practices knowledge base or critical issues uh, list here and this actually includes more than a thousand critical issues they can so it's it's too many so they can actually search by keyword um, and then uh, uh, you know select uh, from a short list also they can select their own key result area own critical issue um, entirely uh, separate to uh, the best practices templates. So once they've selected these items, uh, they act, it actually forms the questionnaire itself and they go to the next you know, final critical issues list. And, and it's a collaboration between all the expert panel members. And then, uh, you know, this is the list of uh, critical issues and, and they have been approved by the executive sponsor. So that's the customized questionnaire part. Select assessors is similar. The stakeholder, the expert panel uh, members for stakeholder selection, they would basically nominate individuals within specific stakeholder groups, internal or external. And then, um, you know, those uh, particular assessors, in this case, we can actually see uh, the people who have been nominated. Uh, all these assessors uh, will be part of the assessor list. Now, also, the system allows uh, the expert panel members to remove or add assessors uh, anytime as needed. Uh, similarly, they can remove or add critical issues as needed. Now, um, once the questionnaire is finalized and assessors are finalized and submitted to the executive sponsor, the executive sponsor, who is the head of quality management, would approve the questionnaire and also approve the assessor or stakeholder list. Uh, finally, uh, you have uh, the questionnaire and this is how the questionnaire would look like uh, you can add any number of questions and uh, the questionnaire uh, is fairly um, easy to fill um, you know uh, assessors can actually uh, speak uh, there's a speech to text functionality so they don't actually have to type in um, and uh, they can put in any kind of comments uh, they need to they can log back in anytime and update these ratings over time they can also access these questionnaires through web as you're seeing here or through mobile devices so we've made it really easy for them uh, easy and enjoyable for them to give feedback they can also collaborate this is a collaboration hub for assessors if you click that uh, you know you can they can actually collaborate with each other um, in, in this uh, assessment so now uh, let's um, let's see now the discovery uh, part then is assessment configuration and selection of expert panel and then the expert panel members do their work and then approvals have to come from the uh, executive sponsor and then once that's done the assessment gets started in earnest assessors get invited uh, to give feedback uh, and um, the the you know the analysis part then starts that's where we now move to the analysis part and this is where you know all the analysis is done automatically so all the performance reports are generated automatically so what you got to do is actually review the performance dashboard so um, let's actually review the performance dashboard now the performance dashboard is quite a significant uh, area for you to look at um, you know there are a lot of different analytics that are um, 
uh, that are included in the performance reports and I'm going to show you uh, how that works. Uh, so, you know, at this point you assume that uh, the discovery part is done, assessors have given their feedback and all the feedback has been analyzed, right? Uh, you can evaluate the feedback, um, you know, by looking at all these uh, different analytics that we go through. But before you do that, keep in mind, you can also set the data horizon um, for which you want to see the results. So if you select a particular data horizon, last three months, last six months, uh, you know, last 12 months or any custom date range and click show report, then it's going to only fetch data for those dates, uh, those time horizons. That's one. If you don't uh, select anything here, then it will actually um, automatically um, you know, analyze all the data that has been collected so far. The other part is if you want to generate PDF and PowerPoint reports of this, these results and share them or present them, you can actually uh, do that here, a report module list. You can actually select specific uh, report modules that you want to include or exclude and um, you know, that way you can actually customize the report generation. So um, now uh, let's scroll down a bit and, and this is the performance uh, dashboard and you have five uh, drop down areas. One is the performance review, one is uh, strategy effectiveness, then you have execution effectiveness, then you have feedback evaluation, uh, all the stakeholder feedback evaluation, and then you have advanced analytics and there you have risk analysis, optimization analysis, and trends and forecasts. So let's quickly go through these. Performance review, that's what you're looking at right now. Um, you are looking at the executive summary section. So this is the executive summary section with five drop down areas. The first one, let's open it up. Uh, for quality management, this is the executive summary. And it's designed to give you a quick uh, snapshot or overview of uh, how the quality management function is actually doing. And it's all text based, so there is no uh, graphs and charts here, but it's very simply written and uh, it's dynamic so that over time this will change and uh, you can quickly see how things are going. Then you can click on effectiveness for quality management. This is the second tab. Here we can see overall effectiveness levels. Uh, we can see stakeholder sentiment levels overall, stakeholder emotion. This is from IBM Watson. Um, we can see the risk index overall for the quality management function and also the optimization index. Okay, now uh, let's um, close the second tab. The third one here is about uh, a quick show of the SWOT analysis for quality management. And you can see specific critical issues listed here based on stakeholder feedback. And you can see the SWOT uh, matrix. You can also see, uh, you know, uh, the strengths. Uh, yeah, this is, these are the strengths, these are the weaknesses, uh, critical issues under each area. For any particular critical issue, you can actually click on this magnifying glass and, and open up the CSF window and see greater levels of detail, um, CSF trends, uh, effectiveness trends and sentiment trends, um, and then also um, specific feedback, positive or negative feedback uh, on uh, quality management. And then you can uh, also see the ideas for action, whatever the ideas for action or action plan items that are currently going on. You can also open up any idea for action and see the trends in terms of effectiveness. You can also drill down to the task level. What are the tasks that are being implemented uh, and then what's the status of those tasks? So it's quite a, quite a bit of drill down you can do uh, at a very practical uh, level for each critical issue that, are, that is relevant for quality management. Okay, so uh, let's now go to the fourth section. This is high priority action items for quality management. So as part of the executive summary, you want to see what are the high priority items that we are implementing right now. And it actually lists all of them. Sometimes many items are listed, so you can actually um, sh uh, cut it down by searching by keyword. So if uh, say, um, uh, if I type in the word skills, I can see there are three action items going on uh, that have the word skills uh, in it. So you can always, always uh, makes it easy to search these IFAs. And finally, if you want to see the questionnaire itself, then quality management assessment questionnaire is, uh, is listed here. 
and just all the all the questions each line item here is a question and you can see red yellow green um, based on the effectiveness ratings they have received so if you want to know why this particular CSF is not performing well um, or this particular key result area is not performing well you can open it up and see you know um, you know why it's not performing well and you can actually open up you can see the critical success factor underneath that and then um, you can open up uh, the CSF window as we saw before so um, that's an easy way to see all the key result areas um, let's now move on to the second section which is overall effectiveness index and uh, again um, effectiveness is defined as a weighted average effectiveness rating received from all the stakeholders and here you can see for quality management overall we are now seeing the overall results you can see all the key result areas again for overall um, quality management strategic goals effectiveness ratings again red yellow green key objectives again red yellow green uh, and these are the effectiveness ratings for critical success factors uh, one of the things to remember is that assessors give feedback on critical success factors only okay and then they're rolled up to strategic goals and key objectives and so on. Uh, if we scroll down further, we see the effectiveness levels for ideas for action that are being implemented right now. So we can see implementation progress. So many of the ideas for action are green, some are yellow, some are red, and then uh, some are zero because uh, no progress has been made yet on those IFAs. Here we can see the KPIs for quality management that are being tracked within the system and we can see red, yellow, green. And finally, we can see uh, effectiveness ratings for quality management by stakeholder group. So uh, based on all the assessors who are part of these different stakeholder groups, we can uh, see their weighted average effectiveness uh, ratings that they have given. So let's scroll up uh, to the very top uh, again. Uh, here, the other thing is, uh, each of these are key result areas. So if I click on, say, um, this one, I will see these uh, colors uh, are based on the effectiveness gap. So uh, if the effectiveness gap is very large, then it's gonna be red, so uh, not good. So, and if it's green, and now you can see effectiveness gap is very low, and so that's good news. So um, again, um, I, can, I can click on say stakeholder relations, and I see that, uh, you know, stakeholder relations is, uh, 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 you know, not doing very well. Uh, quality management again um, you know effectiveness level is uh, not very good um, again uh, it helps us focus on the areas that are red and um, we'll be able to to uh, then see uh, uh, focus on those items so the um, so uh, let's move on to the next area which is key result area now if you want to drill down uh, to the key result uh, within the key result areas we can actually do that here uh, here we can see how many um, key result areas are there how many strategic goals how many critical issues uh, and so all these things you can view uh, in terms of summary and then uh, let's say we want to drill down uh, into one of the red areas say say this one quality management process it has a negative uh, stakeholder sentiment rating as well not a very good current effectiveness rating um, so let's open it up so we can see a strategic goal is here and then we can uh, see the key objective underneath that and then finally we can see the critical success factor and we can open up the critical success factor and see what are the ideas for action currently being implemented uh, if you want to drill down further we can see the KPIs that are being uh, followed under that particular idea for action or linked to that idea for action so there's a quite a lot of drill down uh, that you can do um, as part of the KRAs. Uh, let's scroll up now. Uh, let's go to balance scorecard. Now the balance scorecard is obviously the KPIs um, under quality management that are placed under these different, uh, the four different uh, balance scorecard perspectives. And for any of these KPIs, uh, you can actually, um, you know, drill in, uh, let's say, um, you know, percent of quality management team members who are satisfied with the quality management reporting oversight. Let's open up that and see, um, you know, actual versus target and the trends. Okay. 
So uh, let's now move on. Uh, let's see what it, uh, performance alerts. Yeah, performance alerts. As we discussed before, uh, based on how you configure your performance alerts for quality management, uh, you will be receiving these alerts uh, uh, on your mobile and through email and so on. And uh, they are the performance alerts are simply divided into two groups: positive alerts and negative alerts. Positive alerts are areas where the quality management team is outperforming and um, you know whether it's in the area of um, strategic goals or key objectives or KPIs it is outperforming so let's see uh, some of those so positive alerts for quality management let's say key result areas these are all the key result areas where the quality management team is outperforming you can click on view details uh, if you click on view details you'll see it will then take you to uh, you know uh, the, the relevant area uh, so that you can drill in and understand more about that particular um, area um, of performance so um, all these uh, are you know uh, give you the ability to drill down so you can see all the key areas other areas and you can obviously drill down into those so let's go back uh, so that these are positive alerts could be in the area of strategic goals or key objectives uh, and so on Let's take a look at a few negative alerts. Negative alerts are areas like, okay, so key result area, we can see that you had set, you had set the configurator um, at a 40% threshold level, meaning if the current effectiveness level was less than 40%, uh, you should be receiving a negative alert. And you see there are a couple of them here and you're receiving a negative alert. Similarly, you can see there are uh, four critical issues that have uh, negative alerts for you. And you can click view details and then uh, again it will uh, take you to the relevant uh, issue or item and uh, let you drill in further um, and then track and monitor the progress. I think one of the key um, benefits is that uh, this kind of system helps you answer the why not just the what uh, of what's going on so uh, we can uh, we can open it up and, and here you can see uh, that this is the uh, effectiveness rating here is dropping pretty sharply um, sentiment rating again pretty low negative um, and then see the high fidelity business intelligence is this negative feedback here on that particular critical issue uh, you can see why uh, people are having a negative uh, sentiment uh, in this area and also you can see what are the action items that are being implemented right now um, as you can see a lot of action items here only one of them is green most of them are yellow or not even started so um, gives you a lot of food for action and thought okay so that's the uh, key result area um, uh, look we looked at the balance scorecard and performance alerts um, um, here um, so that's the performance alerts. Um, obviously, you can open up the view window and, and see the explanations anytime you want. Let's uh, let's now go back uh, to the let's let's go to the performance uh, performance canvas. This is the uh, another way of looking at the overall performance of the quality management function, and you'll see how it shows us trend lines in terms of effectiveness ratings um, right here. So, for example, for quality management, we can see the overall trend in uh, current and desired effectiveness. We can see sentiment rating trends by stakeholder group uh, over here. Um, you can also select and deselect specific groups and see how a particular group uh, has rated the stakeholder, um, their stakeholder sentiment. Then um, effectiveness ratings and trends um, <clears throat> also additional data by key result area. The nice thing here is you can actually sort items here. So you can see which items are worst performing or even if you click it again, which items are best performing in terms of both sentiment rating and CSF. Then we have stakeholder sentiment uh, by stakeholder group. You can see which stakeholder group has the best, highest stakeholder sentiment and things like that. And here you have all the critical issues listed. And uh, once again, you can uh, sort these critical issues uh, by current effectiveness rating. You can see the ones in which it's worst performing, see uh, critical issues, or uh, you know, let's say the uh, best performing sentiment rating, and so on. It's ranked like that. 
You can also drill into specific key result areas. So this is showing the overall performance canvas for quality management. If we click on a particular key result area, let's say, uh, let's say this one has, um, uh, you know, uh, this is red because current effectiveness rating is fairly low. Stakeholder relations. If we click on that, then it takes us to the stakeholder relations area, and we can see all the data here is related to stakeholder relations, and we can see all the other uh, results. So uh, finally, let's go to the KPI area, and this simply lists all the key performance indicators under quality management that are being tracked within uh, Performax 360, and you'll be able to see uh, you'll be able to see all the KPIs here uh, for overall. You can also see the KPIs by key result area over here. See, for example, this one has three KPIs. <clears throat> And then we can open up a KPI and see uh, it's, a, it's a trend. Okay, so uh, let's, that's the performance review section. As you can see, a lot of data, a lot of insights. The strategy effectiveness section is basically all about the SWOT analysis. So we saw this before. Uh, the SWOT analysis uh, gives you um, insights into critical issues that are classified into the four groups based on stakeholder uh, feedback and you can obviously drill into any particular critical issue as we saw before. You can also go here and select uh, strengths which will only list the critical issues that are classified as strengths. Here we have weaknesses, here are opportunities and here are the threats. And uh, as we discussed before, you know, any of these critical issues, you can, uh, you can open up the relevant uh, window and see the positive and negative feedback from stakeholders and you can see the trends and so on. Let's move now to the execution effectiveness. This is about, you know, um, how things are going. Uh, and so key initiatives and projects. Uh, when you select a critical issue, um, or when you select action items within critical issues uh, for implementation, then those action items uh, naturally fall into, you know, uh, certain key initiatives and projects for the quality management uh, function. So here we see that there are three, um, uh, there are three, uh, 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 what we call key initiative areas. So uh, let's open up one of them. Um, or company motivation and under that there are a number of quality management initiatives that are going on and you can again sort them by keyword or shortlist them by keyword but you can see what all are, are, are the items action items going on within specific projects and initiatives then the prioritize action plan this section will um, show you the action plans or action items that are currently going on under quality management and, and these are broken out into high, medium, and low priority categories uh, through, the, uh, through two stages, actually. Uh, first of all, there is AI or artificial intelligence, a fuzzy logic algorithm that classifies these action items into high, medium, and low priority based on uh, multiple factors. And then this classification is presented to the expert panel on action planning who review it, vet it, and they can reclassify as needed. So it's really augmented intelligence so let's take a look at high priority action items for quality management. This is the list. Again, you can search those uh, by keyword and you can open up any IFA and see how the progress is going and see more details. Let's now um, scroll down uh, the high priority. We have seen uh, medium priority, low priority. And, and over here you see the critical issue prioritization matrix. So critical issues have been prioritized uh, into uh, you know this matrix, and also uh, you can see you know this made the the red is high priority, the green is low priority, and and the logic here is that uh, the green is performing very well, and therefore it is a lower priority for immediate action and or or immediate attention. Same thing with IFA, all these ideas for action are red uh, simply because they are underperforming. Um, these IFAs are green, they are performing very well, they are not like urgent attention required items. So uh, let's now move on uh, 
let's now move on to the dependency structure matrix. This is part of uh, enterprise systems engineering. And uh, here you see, um, you know, how specific critical issues are dependent or uh, re are related to other critical issues for quality management. And the, the higher the number, the darker the, the color and um, the, the, the higher the level of dependency. And, and these numbers um, and these classifications are done by the uh, expert panel on assessment design. Let's now move on to resource allocation. And this section basically um, allows you to enter the headcount allocation and the budget allocation relatively to uh, specific key result areas. And also the psychological, physical and financial commitments uh, within the quality management organization. Once you do that, uh, the system automatically um, evaluates uh, whether your current level of effort allocation is optimal or not to each of these key result areas and how you should uh, reallocate them. So let's now move on to multi-attribute utility analysis. This is also part of enterprise systems engineering. And you see, the, um, you see three sections here. The critical issue or CSF utility index, if you open it up, you will see it lists critical issues based on a rank and it does so based on um, an evaluation of the benefits, costs and time to benefit for each critical issue. The assessor utility index does a similar thing. It ranks assessors based on the value the organization derives based on their input and uh, evaluates that based on the assessor's cost um, the value of their feedback and also the actionability of the assessor's ideas. Finally, the Idea for Action Utility Index or IFA Utility Index ranks all the ideas for action that have been implemented uh, that are under implementation right now within quality management. And it ranks them uh, in a utility index based on the benefits, costs and time to benefit for each idea for action. So that completes the executive, uh, uh, oh, we, we still have the alignment map to review. Let's take a look at the alignment map, which is just a kind of a tree structure, which you can uh, leverage to see uh, how the quality management function is doing. So if we scroll to the right, we see quality management here uh, at the top, quality management. And this is a 30%, um, you know, um, uh, there is a 30% effectiveness gap that's there overall so that's that's a fairly high gap that's why it's yellow uh, underneath the quality management uh, you have the key result areas so we see these key result areas in a tree structure and you see red yellow green based on the effectiveness gap and you might want to drill down into some details let's say quality audit and compliance we can click on the plus button here and that actually opens up and tells us that there are two strategic goals under this key result area and both of them are red uh, in terms of effectiveness gap. We can open up one of them. Let's say quality audit governance. And uh, now we can see uh, there are a couple of key objectives underneath that. Uh, let's open them up as well. By the way, um, keep in mind that there's this learn more button, uh, you know, in, in these boxes. You can always uh, drill in to a further level of detail when you, uh, when you click on that uh, button. So let's say if I click on this, learn more, and this is a quality audit committee. You can see the key objective for quality audit committee. And then uh, whatever stakeholder feedback is there, you can see those. So here we see uh, for this key objective, this is the critical success factor. And uh, under that, there are a number of ideas for action that are currently being implemented. Again, red, yellow, green based on their, um, you know, based on their progress. And uh, um, that is percent completion. So the, the, this red, yellow, green is based on their percent completion. So. So this is a way, the alignment map therefore uh, gives you a way to actually drill in, in in a different way. Here you see the KPIs as well. Uh, but it's essentially the same information present, being presented in a few different ways. Now, uh, 
that completes the execution effectiveness section. Let's now move on to the feedback evaluation section. And this section is all about the core stakeholder feedback that has been received. So let's take a look. First is issue-based feedback. So here we see um, what are the issues under quality management? Well, at a broad level, you have uh, issues like performance and results, strategy and planning, people and leadership, customer focus and innovation, execution and process, analytics and insights, and technology and digital transformation. So let's pick, say, pe people and leadership and see if there are any responses from stakeholders in this area. And we see that, yeah, executive management, there are three responses. Let's open it up and see these are the three responses that were given under people and leadership uh, uh, area. Uh, what did the mid-level management uh, say? So we can open up and see that. So issue-based feedback we can get. Then let's go to stakeholder groups. This is uh, simply going to list the stakeholders or assessors who have given feedback. So this answers the question, who has given feedback? And you're being able to see the names here and pictures and all just because uh, the assessors are not anonymous. And that's how this system was configured. That's why you're being able to see the names. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to see them. Uh, then the stakeholder map, this is a a standard stakeholder map uh, where you have stakeholder influence in the vertical and stakeholder interest on the horizontal axis and and you can see the different stakeholder groups um, these classifications have been done by the expert panel on uh, on stakeholder selection let's move now to stakeholder feedback and sentiment this is where you see uh, all the different stakeholder groups that are listed here these are the quality management stakeholder groups for this particular assessment. You can see assessment feedback by stakeholder group. You can see a word, word cloud based on all their feedback. Now, uh, you can open up any particular stakeholder group by clicking here and you can see all their feedback, positive and negative. Okay. Now, you might, you might want to um, find out if there is stakeholder feedback on any particular area and that you can do by uh, searching for a particular keyword. So for quality management, let's say training is a key area. Uh, so training, let's see. Yes, there are some results here uh, in the area of training. Uh, we can see um, a negative uh, result from executive management. Um, then if you scroll down, we see nothing from uh, senior managers uh, let's see here we see some feedback from junior staff um, so this is the kind of uh, value addition you can see because uh, you can actually directly um, focus on specific topics of interest and directly see who has said what next uh, let's go to uh, ideas for action so ideas for action are all the ideas for action submitted by stakeholders. You can see by stakeholder group, let's say, if you want to know what ideas for action we received from junior staff, let's click it open and see these are all the ideas for action. You can also see whether action has been taken on, on, on some of them or not. Say for executive management, uh, open it up. Some of these um, are actions or ideas for action on which action has not yet been taken. So if you're an executive sponsor, you click on take action for this IFA, you can actually uh, take action, assign a KPA uh, to it and, and you know sort of put it on the action plan. So let's now move on to key performance indicators. This, these are all the KPIs recommended by stakeholders. So this gives you that list by stakeholder group, what KPI recommendation you receive. And also, if you click on shortlisted KPI, this will show you all the KPIs we have actually shortlisted um, as a result of this. Now we'll go to stakeholder priorities. When stakeholders give feedback, they actually prioritize their feedback in the high, medium and low category, low priority buckets. So that's how we have bucketed it. And so you can see the buckets and you can see the feedback by stakeholder group. So for quality management, what are the stakeholder emotions? And here we use IBM Watson for emotion analysis. 
if you want to know what's the feelings, what are the emotions overall for a particular stakeholder group, you can actually uh, go to that particular stakeholder group, say junior staff. Let's open it up and for quality management, we see the stakeholder emotion and we can also see social tendency. So this really completes the feedback evaluation section. Let's now go to the advanced analytics section. Risk analysis. Here you see the uh, cross correlation matrix um, that shows a, a, a cross correlation over time uh, between the critical issues uh, for quality management. Then we have the negative trending effectiveness ratings for quality management. And these items are the critical issues that were evaluated in the questionnaire. And if we deselect some of these items, we can actually uh, remove the clutter and see what are the items. See, for example, internal quality audit is something on which there is, seems to be a long-term uh, negative trend going on here. Value at risk is a similar thing. Based on the volatility, it actually um, <coughs> shows uh, the value at risk uh, for quality management derived uh, from specific critical issues. So we can see, um, you know, how that's uh, moving over time. The stress test actually uh, shows a stress test of the KPI attainment for quality management. And this is the uh, composite KPI uh, average across all KPIs in terms of attainment rate. And then you can see what would happen if you reduced uh, effectiveness ratings by 20% or if you increased effectiveness ratings by 20%, how would KPI respond? And then the CSF risk index, the hyperplane, um, this is interactive uh, and it will help you see uh, which uh, critical issues um, present a higher risk to the quality management function. And so here we see a lot of black dots. Each dot is a critical issue and we see some are in the red area. So uh, let's take a look, quantifying IT risk exposure and then evaluating statutory compliance. These are, um, you know, quality management policy. These are critical issues that have a negative uh, uh, situation because it, it represents a higher level of risk. Now you can say, why is it risk? Uh, why is it high risk? And that's because it has a low effective, low implementation effectiveness, also low, C uh, uh, effectiveness rating overall so that's why the risk index is high so that actually covers the risk analysis uh, let's now go to optimization analysis here we show a support vector machine uh, critical issue classification and these are the critical issues that have urgent attention required because of the uh, because of the results it has received uh, low KPI attainment low effectiveness rating and so on here then we move to the principal component analysis and so there are so many critical success factors here. How can we um, reduce the dimensionality and focus on a few? And that's why the, uh, uh, the principal component analysis helps us focus on the relevant uh, critical issue. Then we move on to the um, uh, multi-objective genetic algorithm. So the KPI attainment for quality management um, at what level or at how high can it go given a certain stakeholder sentiment rating or vice versa. And so this gives you a Pareto frontier for your KPI attainment. Also shows a positive relationship uh, in terms of optimization. Uh, so we also have the CSF optimization index uh, that shows you which uh, critical issues are well optimized. So management reporting and stress testing, for example, highly optimized. Um, here we have process compliance fairly highly optimized, nothing really in red, so uh, some, a bunch of these are in yellow. And finally, under advanced analytics, we'll review the trends and forecasts. So first of all, what are the critical issues that are performing uh, better and better over time? So again, let's unclutter this by deselecting some of these items and we'll be able to see, uh, you know, this uh, dynamic analysis and reporting is showing a positive over time, the criticals, uh, over time, the effectiveness level is improving uh, based on stakeholder feedback. Okay. And then we have the second tab here, which is the neural network forecasting. That is, how are the critical issues expected to perform going forward? So this gives us a three-month uh, forecast for the effectiveness 
levels for each critical issue. So right now I'm just uh, deselecting some of these from the list so that I can focus on uh, a few items and I can see for example online analytical processing or dynamic analysis and reporting or even stakeholder feedback. Um, you know, I can see how it's moving over time and what's the, uh, what's the forecast likely to be. And it's based on neural network forecasting. So that, that concludes all the analytics. We have reviewed all the analytics sections. Uh, it, it's time consuming and a bit tedious, but uh, you know, this gives you a full picture of all the analyst, analysis you, you'll be getting access to. And uh, the couple of other things, uh, th there's one other thing I haven't shown yet is the implementation dashboard. So let's take a look at the implementation dashboard. The implementation dashboard is designed to give you a view on the progress, uh, status, progress level or the progress status of all the ideas for action that are currently under implementation. So uh, let's say I want to see those that are in process or if I want to see those that are not started yet so that I can follow up with the KPAs and make sure that uh, they get started. I can list those or I can see those that are in process how many are in how many have been completed none have been completed yet uh, so let's take a look at in process and if you want to dig in say implement best practice and quality management reporting oversight click on the view dashboard and that gives us a deeper understanding of uh, how things are going at a task level okay so you can drill in there uh, okay so uh, the so let's go back to the um, let's go back to the di digital engagement process so the analysis part we have now done a full set of analysis and let's say you've got a lot of insights uh, you know from stakeholders and so on what about action so the expert panel on action planning they will be looking at this area shortlist ideas for action and they will see all the ideas for action that have been submitted by assessors by priority category Okay, um, they will also be able to see uh, ideas for action for quality management um, and they'll be able to open up any particular idea for action and reclassify the priority uh, level. So uh, once they shortlist ideas for action, they submit it for approval. And this is where the approved action plan, this, this is the part where the executive sponsor approves uh, the action items. So uh, these are the ones that are new, not yet approved, and they can basically approve it, accept it, and so on. Once the um, uh, idea for action is approved, uh, the executive sponsor has to assign accountability. So who is going to run with it? Uh, and so, as you can see here, uh, they can basically assign someone to it and or change the assignment at any point. So once the KPA assignment or key person accountable assignment is done, uh, that's the, the next step would be to go to the implementation dashboard and review the, uh, review the results, uh, progress and so on. Now, once the implementation progress is being reviewed and followed up and so on, one of the, uh, one of the, um, uh, one of the areas that really comes in handy is the performance uh, uh, performance alert section. So as we've seen before, uh, you'll be able to see positive and negative alerts. It will come to you proactively. Uh, you can even change the configuration settings uh, anytime. So uh, if you go to the assessment configurator and uh, for the performance alerts, you can change the thresholds anytime and uh, you'll be receiving uh, performance alerts accordingly. So that actually completes the review of the web uh, application for the quality management function. Let's now um, briefly take a look at the mobile version. Okay, let's take a look at the mobile application for quality management. So here we have a um, iPhone and the iOS app. You can go to the Apple App Store and download the Performax 360 app or you can go to the Google Play Store and download the same. And so let's let's uh, launch the app and enter the uh, email address. So here you'll enter your email address. I'm going to enter the uh, <clears throat> login credentials for the 
quality management assessment that is a demo and uh, it's the same username and password you would use to log into the web application as you would to log into the mobile application so uh, click on the start button here and that will launch the um, assessment results for quality management so here we see new active and ongoing so I'm going to click ongoing because assessment results are in and uh, for quality management I can now see uh, the overall results uh, in terms of effectiveness levels and I see the options uh, continue feedback implementation dashboard and performance dashboard so uh, let's take uh, the continue feedback is for the assessors to provide the feedback or continue to give feedback uh, the performance dashboard we have already seen in the web let's take a look at a few of these features in the mobile so here we now see um, you have to give it about 30 to 45 seconds to load because there's typically quite a lot of data to load and also the um, 3G or 4G connection speed or 5G connection speed sometimes matters but um, essentially all the results here are reflected um, or it mirrors the results we have already gone through in the web um, a little while ago so uh, I want to just give you a flavor for how the user experience or the um, you know user interactivity works with the mobile and uh, keep in mind that when you download this you, you also have access to um, the iPad version so under performance review you have this familiar sections uh, summary overall effectiveness index let's take a look at the overall effectiveness index here you can see uh, the critical issues um, you know how they're performing uh, all the critical issues okay red yellow green and so on uh, let's scroll down uh, progress satisfaction uh, with IFAs we see that a lot of IFAs are zero progress some are red then um, you know you can actually click on any item and see which item it is and we see the yellow ones then we scroll down these are all the ideas for action that are currently underway then here we see the KPIs okay so we can also uh, you know see which KPIs under quality management are performing well which are not and then effectiveness chart by assessor group for quality management you can see which assessor group has rated if quality management at which level so uh, then in the strategy effectiveness we can look at the SWOT analysis here um, we see um, strengths then we can see the weaknesses scroll to the right we can see the opportunities further to the right we see the threats so uh, under each category it's actually listing the critical issues that uh, are there so under uh, sorry let's go back uh, so under say weaknesses we see all these uh, weaknesses say quality management policy the second one here um, this one uh, let's take a look click here and open it up and now we see the effectiveness levels desired effectiveness levels and so on for this CSF now we can also see uh, drill in to the details by clicking here and uh, now we can see the quality management policy effectiveness levels and then we'll be able to see the effectiveness trends over time for this particular CSF okay and um, we can also see the sentiment trends uh, over time so we can see the sentiment rate. scrolling down here we see the positive and negative feedback we have received from stakeholders so this is all the uh, you know positive feedback and then uh, let's say the negative feedback uh, we can see the negative feedback as well so let's now go back um, so under execution effectiveness again there are a lot of things here uh, let's take a look at the prioritized action plan and we see these action items uh, as well so any action item you can actually open it up further and see further details in terms of progress and so on. Uh, feedback evaluation let's open that up and see uh, a lot of things here say stakeholder map let's open it up and we see the stakeholder map um, so these things we have seen in the uh, mobile as well uh, in the web uh, as well 
Um, let's see, prioritized action plan. Let's take a look at that. Oh, we already we already saw that. Uh, let's uh, let's go to a feedback evaluation. Uh, I did, uh, here we see issue based feedback. Let's click on that. And for any of these issues, let's pick people and leadership. Okay, let's open it up. And on the people and leadership, we see the risk, how many responses from each stakeholder group. Let's see what executive management have said about people and leadership, and then and then we see the the, the feedback. So uh, let's go back uh, to the menu and under advanced analytics. Well, yeah, under advanced. Uh, okay, let's let's do advanced analytics under risk analysis. Let's go to risk analysis and the advanced analytics sections are particularly um, um, important for um, getting advanced insights and we can see the cross correlation matrix and so on um, uh, between. Uh, critical issues. Uh, so uh, the last section here about the assessment, this will give you basic information about, you know, um, let's see, it said assessment profile. We can see the assessment profile and so on. <clears throat> let's go back. Let's now take a look at the implementation dashboard. And here we'll be able to get access to ideas for action being implemented for quality management and how the implementation is going for each of the ideas for action. So uh, here, let's scroll down and see for quality management, we have a number of ideas for action. And uh, well, too many actually uh, to sort. So that's why we have the search function. So um, let's say we want to search all these ideas for action by keyword. And let me say again, training, say training is important. And so we go down and it's a smaller list uh, already. So uh, let's open up one of these ideas for action. The idea was we should train uh, board members and quality audit committee members on the latest developments in quality management and so on. Let's open that up. And now we can see uh, for this particular IFA, what is the progress status? And uh, let's click on view IFA details and we'll be able to uh, then see the is the progress status okay so action status is in process how much has been completed and the update so let's go back uh, so now um, I want to show you the collaboration hub because you know assessors give feedback ex expert panel members engage and the, uh, the executive sponsor also uh, engages so the collaboration hub is a way to sh share views um, and you can see assessment design. This is for expert panel members for assessment design. Let's click that and it opens up the collaboration hub. And what I can do is I can actually, uh, you know, communicate with the other expert panel members uh, for, uh, uh, for assessment design. And I can just uh, share data with them or information with them. And I also want to show you this performance alert section, which you already saw this section in the web a while ago. But in the mobile also, it's always useful to uh, be, be able to get access to all this information while, uh, while you're on the go. And um, the performance alerts will be reflecting the configuration settings that you've done uh, in the uh, uh, mobile, uh, in the web section in uh, performance alert section so here uh, the performance alerts will uh, allow you to take action so give it a give it a bit of time to load uh, unfortunately it takes a bit of time to load so here we see a lot of um, you know we see 83 positive alerts 113 negative alerts let's open it up and uh, and see what what we have so um, so you, now you see the positive alerts here and let's open up the key result areas and here are all the key result areas that have positive uh, alerts. Let's go to the negative alerts now and see the key result areas again. Now you see the two key result areas that are giving us negative alerts. Okay, and, and so in the more section, I just want to quickly show you, uh, you get access to a variety of things here. Uh, the support, this one, if you have any questions or uh, need to get answers to any FAQs, this support section will be useful for you. 
because you can click on um, search for answers and, and review our extensive knowledge base. And you can also communicate with us if you click on this button, this question button, then it opens up the uh, uh, this area. Click on the blue button here and uh, sorry, this has opened up a Siri. <laughs> uh, okay, so here, here it is. Uh, you click on the support and you can actually start uh, a conversation with us. Um, you know, if you click on uh, that, then you can actually uh, converse with us in live chat. Okay, um, so that's all about the um, the assessment uh, using the mobile device. Uh, just one more thing under the settings, uh, sometimes you uh, click on the settings and you may need to clear the cache uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, so that um, it doesn't get stuck and so on. Okay, if you have any other questions uh, regarding the quality management assessment or you want a live demo, uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, and we'll be glad to uh, to show you that, um, you know, contact Performax. If you click that, you can send us an email or you can uh, call us uh, and we'll be glad to, uh, glad to respond to you immediately. Thanks very much for watching.